Now that I've got a decent video camera, I wanna give you guys a proper tour. So uh, let's check it out. Welcome to Truck House Live, baby. basically wanted to build a cabin on wheels. I wanted something that was uh, super fun, super unique, something that I felt good about, something I was proud to own. And uh, this is the design I came up with in my head. So the truck is a 1996 Ford F350. That's a power stroke diesel, a 7.3 engine. So um, it pulls the weight of the camper awesome and can still pull trailers or whatever else you need. It's got a six inch lift. Um, that way I could get 35 inch tires on there. Your truck camper takes a ton of abuse in the road, um, just from the vibration of the road and the potholes. Um, it's essentially like your house going through a 5.0 earthquake constantly. So they have to be built strong if you want them to last. Most commercially manufactured campers are made out of one by twos and they're held together with staples and glue. So of course the road shakes them apart. My number one priority in building a camper was durability. I wanted it to withstand road vibration and potholes and not fall apart. This camper is over-engineered in the critical areas, uh, such as the corners and the floor, the places that are most likely to fall apart on your camper. To compensate for beefing up the corners, um, I used two by twos um, along the walls so that helped lighten things up. So another priority in building the camper was a unique aesthetic. I really love the look of natural wood um, and I wanted to keep that look to it for a few reasons. Number one, uh, people all over the world work with wood. So if something happens while you're out there, uh, you can find a general carpenter or do it yourself and fix the camper like you need to. So to waterproof the wood, I did it just like you would uh, do a wooden sailboat in the ocean. It's got uh, varnish on it, which is essentially a waterproof gel coating. I use captain's varnish and do four coats of captain's varnish all over the outside on all the wood. So all the windows are double sealed. Um, they're sealed with a silicone tape. And then I also uh, put silicone on top of the silicone tape and that just helps really waterproof the windows and seal all the water out. I kept getting uh, messages left under my windshield wipers so I decided to just put a little mailbox in there. Thought that was kind of funny. You can see up there in the roof, I've got a 100 watt solar panel. And for the chimney flue, I use a, a three inch wind directional chimney cap uh, that just rotates around and creates a nice vacuum. So you can actually have a fire going while you're driving down the highway. The roof of the camper has a 512 pitch. So most campers out there have a flat roof, which uh, water accumulates and puddles up and leaks through. Um, so you get a lot of water damage with a flat roof camper. Uh, this camper, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it sheds water off instantly. That way there's no chance of it pulling up. And uh, it also sheds snow off. That way you don't have to worry about a heavy snow load collapsing the roof of your camper if you leave for a couple months. So the outside of the camper uh, under the plywood is wrapped with Tyvek, just like a typical house. Uh, it's waterproof and breathable, so it helps the condensation escape. The roof has two layers of water protection, uh, first being the metal roof that just keeps the water off it, period. Under that, you've got Grace Ice and Water Shield, uh, super waterproof, super awesome uh, rubberized membrane. Uh, so it's got two layers of protection. On the front of the truck, I had uh, a buddy Joe uh, weld a custom uh, front bull bar uh, just for added protection. Um, and I threw a worn 12,000 pound winch on here um, that things already come in handy a few times. I would highly recommend putting airbags in the rear suspension. Um, it just takes the load off the springs and just helps stabilize your ride. Here's the system. It's just a double collapsing, double hinge steer. One release there, one release under the bottom, and they fold right out, just like that. Nice and easy to walk up. Nice and easy to walk down. Um, when you need to put them away, 
it takes a split second, just like that. One latch under there, one latch on the side, and you're on your way. The camper's designed so you can still see your brake lights and signals and tail lights on both sides. Um, but I went ahead for an extra measure of safety and installed uh, additional just brake turn and running lights. As you can see, I've got a couple different tie down points. There's tie down points up high for if you want to do a side mount tie down points. And I also uh, installed some hidden ones down here and it just connects down there to the frame. The front of the camper also has a couple of different tie down points. There's one on the outside in case you want to do a torque lift style tie down to the frame. I also have tie down points right in there so you can tie directly into your bed. Here's a reverse camera right here so you can actually see when you're backing up since you can't see through the camper. And there's a couple of seats in the porch. Uh, one is storage for propane, uh, the battery, and the furnace exhaust. The other side you can store whatever you want. Right now in the wintertime I've got firewood in there for the wood stove. Super cozy to sit on and stay out of the rain. So you can sit down here with a friend and take in the views under a nice dry roof. So the door um, is completely handmade. It's five foot seven tall. Uh, so you have to duck just slightly going under it if you're over five foot seven, but the porch is six foot three. Um, so you can totally stand up in the porch. Yeah, so let's go check out the interior. Stoked to show you guys. And the door handle is much better than your typical RV door handle. Um, it's got a deadbolt style lock on it and just nice and strong and sturdy, easy to open and close. It's got foam board insulation in between the cedar panels. The inside of the door has weather stripping all along the sides and the door jam also has weather stripping to keep the cold weather out and the heat in or vice versa in the summertime. And here is the interior. Now keep in mind, you're looking at an eight foot truck bed. So we're able to squeeze a lot into this. So over here on the left side of the camper, you've got a full size propane oven. So you can bake lasagna, cheesecake, whatever you want. And a three range burner on top. Instead of a sink, um, I found that I don't typically use a ton of water when I'm camping or I try not to. Um, so I just did a faucet style system instead. So um, if you need to wash dishes, you can just place a bowl over the sink and use that as a basin, and then dump that gray water into the toilet. Get your little pump sink. Uh, the water's super easy to fill up. Right here, six gallon jug, take it out, fill it up anywhere you want. Up here, you get a fantastic fan. Um, it's pointed at the wood stove and recirculates the warm air in the winter around the camper. So that works really well. Down below the oven, you've got your propane furnace. The furnace is turned on uh, with your thermostat right here. So uh, that makes it really cozy just uh, being able to wake up in the morning and hit the thermostat and warm the camper up without getting up. You're probably wondering, hey, where's the countertop space? Um, it's hidden. It's right there, folds down on the side. Um, this is unfinished. What you do is pop that up and a little wooden dowel just holds it in place. Um, when you're ready to take it out, you just pop the dowel out and fold it down like that and you're done. I just have a simple cutting board and put a little bracket in the bottom and it's instant counter space just like that. Take it right back off when you're not using it. Between the folding counter space attached to the oven and this other uh, counter space on this side, there's plenty enough to work with to do what you need to do for cooking. So there's a couple of different charging ports in the camper. Uh, one's over here near the kitchen. Um, it's got a 12 volt plug and a couple of USB, different power level uh, charging stations and just a little tray up there I built to uh, sit your cell phone or batteries or whatever you need to charge. Um, same thing on this side. You get a nice uh, TV, DVD player. So on a rainy day, you can sit in here and hang out. Over here above the faucet, you have a battery level indicator, which shows you your battery level. As you can tell, there's uh, plenty of lighting in here. The LED burns about four watts versus about 60 watts for an incandescent bulb. So it saves you a lot of power. So one of my favorite parts about this camper is you can have six people sitting here extremely comfortably. Um, I don't know of hardly any other RVs out there uh, that have two full-size couches on them. This uh, sofa on this side, on the driver's side, is a jackknife sofa, and it actually turns into a bed in a couple of seconds, just like that. So you have a bed, you can sleep two people really cozy. When you're ready to put it away, boom, just like that. So. Um, 
You can sleep uh, two people on this side and one person on this side, so it sleeps three people very comfortably in here. Storage. I did not want to put cabinets up high because that creates a lot of swing weight um, with a high center of gravity. Keeping your storage down low, um, it increases your uh, performance and your safety driving around. The couch on this side stores a lot of stuff. I keep all the bedding up under here, jackets, sleeping bags, stuff like that. Works really well. Down here, you've got in-floor storage. So you lift that up and you can fit all kinds of stuff down there. There's also storage all down in here. Down below the driver's side couch, there's a Dometic CC40 uh, refrigerator freezer. Um, very simple, just take off the release strap and you can slide it right on out and access whatever you need to in there. Extremely efficient, runs off battery power instead of propane, so it'll last you a long time and not use any propane. Pretty cool. So you've got your bathroom, rolls out nice and easy. So you have instant toilet and it goes right back into place real easy. So you have a bathroom. The toilet paper for the bathroom is on a hanger right here above the garbage can. So that's convenient. So the wood stove is a Kimberly wood stove. These are awesome wood stoves in uh, camper applications. Um, it's one of the only stoves that I feel comfortable driving down the highway with a fire going. I'll put it that way. I've got a little firewood rack I built in the back so you can keep some firewood inside overnight. Um, not have to walk out onto the back porch to get extra firewood. Instead of a wall here, I use glass. That way you could be sitting on this couch over here and still see the fire at night. I did a uh, porthole windows up front, um, nice and tinted so you can't really see into them. And they give you a nice view of just what's going on out in the front of your car over the roof. So it's pretty nice. Now the windows in the camper are one of the coolest parts. Uh, these are special windows. Um, there's a couple places in the world where you can get them. Dometic makes them over in Europe and a company called Maygood makes them um, in Japan. So these are the Japanese version. So yeah, the windows open up really easily. Just pop these latches right here and there's different settings. So you can get them open to where you want. When you're ready to close them, just lift up close and latch. When you're ready to go to sleep at night, there's a blind that rolls up from the bottom. Really convenient for privacy. Um, and there's also a mosquito insect screen on top um, if you wanna leave the windows open this summer. One of the other awesome parts of the camper is you can totally stand up in the kitchen. I'm right at six feet tall. Um, I've got a couple inches over my head. So it's about six foot three in the kitchen and goes to about, eh, about five feet tall at the very front of the camper. So there's plenty of room to walk around as you all know, it's really cold in Alaska, um, so I didn't want to mess around with the insulation in this camper. I spray foamed uh, the roof and the walls, so it's very airtight. Uh, when you turn on heat in here, it stays in here a lot longer than it will in almost any other camper out there. One of my other priorities with the camper was functionality. I wanted to have all the comforts of a large RV in an eight foot space. So that means I had to be very thoughtful and mindful about where I was putting things. Um, but in this eight foot space, I was able to squeeze all the comforts of home, basically. Mm -hmm.